In light of this fucking joke of an article, we're gonna be talking about why you shouldn't cherry pick elements from any folklore around the world. G'day to all you fucking cunts out there, I am Trick One Ting, your resident YouTube psychic, who also happens to be a ghost otaku. Today we're gonna be going back to our roots and actually clowning on some cherry pickers. It's very important whenever talking about these things that you understand the full context. But what is cherry picking? Here's the definition. Cherry picking, suppressing evidence or the fallacy of incomplete evidence is the act of pointing to individual cases or data that seem to confirm a particular position while ignoring a significant portion of related and similar cases or data that may contradict that position. In other words, cherry picking is a form of woke hippie propaganda. Yeah, pretty much. So I'm just gonna give an example right off the bat. Look at this fucking joke of a fucking article. Southeast Asia's vengeful man-eating spirit is a feminist icon. The Pontianak is a ghost that avenges women who died in childbirth. Her fearsomeness is linked to her femininity and she will rip your eyes out if you look at her the wrong way. <laughs> Ah, what the fuck is this woke bullshit? Alright, let me show you the actual source. Kuntilanak or Puntianak is often described as an astral female spirit. Another version of this figure is a woman spirit with long sharp fangs and fingernails. It is similar to the spirit of a woman unable to give birth while her stillborn child was inside her womb. This figure mainly known to reside in Kalamantan region containing the city of Pontiana. The Pontiana can disguise herself using the appearance of a beautiful woman to lure her prey in Malaysia. Lord depicts them as vampiric bloodsuckers that rip through the internal organs of man. I mean, honestly, like, what the fuck? This is literally how they hunt their prey. They literally disguise themselves as extremely attractive women to lure in the man so they can tear them apart. There's supposed to appear like prostitutes to actually lure in men. This is the same bait and switch strategy that the kumiho of Korean mythology uses on men. If you guys honestly think that deliberately making yourself look like a target for rapists so that you can kill them is actually empowering, then you're fucking delusional. They want to actually make themselves look rapable because it is how they hunt. Do you think they give a shit about people's masculinity? No, they actually use it to their advantage. And this is the bullet to kill the boar. The Indonesian Kuntilanak is similar to the Pontianak in Malaysia, but commonly takes the form of a bird and sucks the blood of virgins and young women. The bird, which makes a gank 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 sound when it flies, may be sent through black magic to make a woman ill. The characteristic symptoms of vaginal bleeding, when men approach her in her female form, the Kuntilanak suddenly turns and reveals that her back is hollow. Much like the Sundubalong, a prostitute ghost with her large gaping hole on her back. A Kuntilana can be subdued by plunging a sharp nail into the top of her head. So you see, the Puntianak or Kuntilanak does not exclusively and discriminatorily targets men. They also target women. I'm not misogynistic, I'm just stating the fucking full source. If you want, I can actually further clarify it by actually getting in touch with a Bomo or Dukun. I'm surrounded by idiots. So, I think I had a stroke after reading these next few statements, but fuck me dead. A favorite of horror film directors, the Pontianak or Kuntilanak, as she is called in Indonesia, or the Chul in Bangladesh, India, and Pakistan, is often portrayed as, as a social outcast who has fallen in some ways, often by falling in her duties as a mother. But the Pontianak also embodies the subversive female energy that is increasingly 
increasingly being embraced by a new wave of writers and filmmakers. She can walk along and not have to be accompanied by a man. She can be as beautiful and provocative as she wants. She can be extremely gentle or a massive flirt. But if you dare touch her without her consent, her claws will come out. And that's when I realized this guy gets all his sources from movies. So what the fuck? Okay, we're just gonna quickly step out of the movie realm and head into the actual sources and accounts by actual people. Nevertheless, there was an incident that happened on the highway that has caught the attention of a lot of people. This incident does not happen along any of those crosswind sections, but, but inside near the tunnel on the northern section of the highway before approaching the tunnel. Before approaching the tunnel, drivers will go through highly areas with the hill on one side and a sharp cliff on the other. The sharp bends cause the authorities to put speed limits down to 80 miles per hour. This story went public the first time when someone called into the radio during the, a ghost story program. What makes this story even more interesting are the several calls later from witnesses and relatives to verify the story was true. The incident happened on a Malay couple with a small baby. They were driving along the expressway on a late night. They must have been past 2 a.m. then and there aren't many private cars at those hours. As they got near the tunnel, their car broke down. The man stopped his car along along the emergency lane and got off the car to see if there was anything he could do. His wife was sitting at the back of the car with the baby. Then he got off the car, opened up the engine, and apparently was doing something there. The wife just waited in the car with their baby since she is the type of people who has the sl slightest idea about cars. As the engine cover was turned up, the lady could not see what her husband was doing in front. Then there was no noise at all. She started to get worried, perhaps more worried about not being able to get out of there than if there would be anything wrong with her husband. Then the baby started crying. She carried her her up and tried to calm her down. However, the baby kept crying and crying. Afterwards, she noticed two police cars drove by. They slowed down as they passed her, as she thought they would stop. The police car suddenly sped off and then heard a screeching break of the police cars ahead. Apparently, the police stopped their cars under the lights of the tunnel about 100 meters ahead. She then started hearing the policemen shouting at her. They shouted at her and asked her to get out of the car and run towards them. She got panic upon hearing that. Then worry about her babies and her own safety. She grabbed her baby and got out of the car and started running as fast as she could towards the policemen. She was running, they kept shouting at her to hurry. As she was running, they kept shouting at her to hurry up and asked her not to look back. She almost got to where the policemen were. She suddenly thought of her husband. She turned her head back to take a look while continued running. To her horror, she saw three Pontianak with lots of blood on their mouths. She saw one of them licking her husband's head and licking off the dripping blood while two others were busy sucking the blood from the man's body. Two policemen fearing that she may stop running upon seeing that rush to her and drag her into one of the police car. They shot off as fast as they could after that seven policemen witnessed this incident. When the police got there, the man was lying there headless and bloodless. The police after interviewing the widow and the seven policemen who witnessed the incident decided to close the case. In the radio program, somebody called up later to say that 
he ha was one of the policemen where at the time while well, another called up claiming to be the victim's uncle he said he refused to believe the story and had applied for the case to be reopened for investigation he believed it was a murder case another caller said his sister the widow who was distressed after the incident and he appealed to all listeners to believe that the story was true and be more careful on the highway. Alright, so I actually heard this account from We Are Hantu and this story took place in Karak Highway. You know that fucking notorious haunted highway? Yeah. Now I'm not sure about motives or anything, but those three Pontianaks didn't seem the kind to actually get provoked by the guy who was only fixing his car. Like, what? <laughs> I mean, honestly, the guy who was killed in the story didn't seem to be the guy that will abuse his wife or anything. But of course, I'm misogynistic for stating actual accounts and not getting my information from movies like other people. I got plenty of bullets in the belt and I'm willing to actually shoot them all at you guys. So let's just keep going. According to one story, a young Indonesian woman was returning to her college campus late at night. It was dark and there was only a few cars on the street. She decided to get a taxi and flag down a minibus. On the darkened street, the minibus suddenly stopped. The girl looked out of the window thinking that another passenger must have been getting on. She looked in the forest and saw that the driver was gone. He had ran away outside the door of the minibus. Stood a woman in white dress with a extremely pale face and long black hair. The woman was staring directly at her. She was trapped inside the minibus and could not escape. The next morning people found her still inside the minibus cowering on the floor with a terrified look on her face. She was sent to the psychiatric ward and never recovered from the experience. There's a lot of cases where people have actually gone mad actually encountering ghosts. I'm sorry, but the story itself, like... <laughs> <laughs> this story, the driver actually leaving the minibus, leaving the girl with the Pontianak. My fucking brain visualizing that situation must have been like... <laughs> it's gotta be the most realistic reaction ever. I mean, I would probably do that. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm used to seeing ghosts, but if I saw that thing in front of a fucking vehicle, I'd probably just fucking leave the vehicle and dip. Hell fucking no, man. You know, I could just go on and on and on and on and on, but I think you get the gist already. Feminists shouldn't go around cherry picking whatever the shit they see in folklore. And this should go for everybody. If you see something in folklore that actually resonates with you please please for fuck's sake read the actual source read it all the way through because there are some things which you probably won't be able to cross the line and actually do so anyways hopefully you guys enjoy this video i'll be making a full profile video on the puntianak or kuntilanak in the future with actual sources and accounts from real people and honestly this was just a taste and it's really great going back to my reads for a change, but I think it's time to end this video right there. So, anyways, I'm Trick One Team. Keep venturing to the unknown. Signing the fuck off. Okay. Okay. Now I swear I heard this a cackle just now. I swear to. Oh!